All right, everybody. Welcome to the video. Uh, as you can see, I've got a few items out here. What we're going to be doing is uh, trying, this is my first effort ever, at using the Oxpow Blue. Make sure that screen is kind of straight. Looks a little bit crooked here. See if we can make sure you get a good view of this. Oxpow Blue is a chemical agent that will uh, re-blue metal. Uh, this is my 6 hour P229 uh, DAC. Uh, the DAC has gotten mixed reviews over the years. Double action Kellerman is the double action only um, trigger system with the, the short reset is the idea. The, the, the safety is the hard trigger pull and then with the reset uh, and training you can double tap quickly and efficiently. That's how it was built. Um, and it, it has detractors and, and people that like it. It is a little on the heavy side for a trigger pull. I will grant you that. However, this particular gun fires every time that you pull the trigger. And that's what you want. Uh, I've had this gun for a long time now and over the years as you can see we've gotten some wear. This is a floating barrel that you can replace with the uh, 357 barrel. This is the 40 caliber model and the 40 caliber too has kind of fallen out of favor. What um, we want to do today is we're going to try to see if we can re-blue this part of the barrel and see what it looks like. I got a new rifle and it had just a slight blemish on the bluing um, and I could return it to the factory uh, and they were happy to touch it up for me. However, it's a lot of pain in the butt for the size of the repair that uh, I was going to do so I figured I would try Brownells product. This was recommended by uh, the gun manufacturer, not SIG, uh, somebody else and they said this is the preferred method if you do it at home. There are some other products on the market. Casey Birchwood, I think, makes a, a three-piece system. Uh, some other folks have used, uh, I think there's something called Black Magic out there. But this was recommended, so I'm going to try it out. Super straightforward on the directions. Um, you need to make sure that the gun is clean. So I went and took the wife's nail polish remover. Acetone base should do the trick. Then you're going to blue the cleaned area. You put it on and work it for about a minute and it should take the color. And then there's a critical third step where you need to make sure that you use a little bit of clean water to wipe off the excess. Now my understanding is that this is a chemical, um, this is a chemical process by which the, uh, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Um, a chemical process that actually, it's like a controlled bluing of the, uh, uh, pardon me, a controlled rusting of the metal. So there are acids inside the Oxfo blue, and when you, uh, after you blew the gun, blew the metal, those acids are on there, and if you don't take that, that critical last step and, um, wipe them off, they will continue to affect the metal and will actually cause it to rust. Uh, as you can see, this has gotten some use over the years. It's really been good to me. Uh, it really is just an exceptional all-around sidearm. If this goes well, there are a couple other little spots that I might touch up um, on the, the frame and, and the slide, but I figured this would be a good place to start just to see how it works and see if we do a a uh, pretty good job and get the results we want. So first thing you have to do is clean the area that you're going to blue. Uh, I'll probably just do a little section so let's just try to do this little top section of the barrel and see how it goes. Um, you know you don't want to mess anything up obviously and if you are afraid you might mess something up it's probably better to do it on a part that you don't have to look at all the time. So just got some acetone here uh, I usually try to maintain my equipment and uh, usually keep everything pretty well oiled. So uh, I am pretty sure that there is at least a, a sheen of, of oil on the barrel and maybe a little bit of finger grease or what have you. So we'll just do a real good job of cleaning that up. Doesn't take very long. I am not a gunsmith no, and I don't even play one on TV. So this is uh, an amateur attempt. And hopefully, if you are, if it goes well, and you're interested in trying your own little simple touch-up or restoration type stuff, maybe this will encourage you to do it. Okay, I think that's pretty clean. Uh, acetone rubbed on there twice. 
You, uh, the other thing is too, this stuff reacts to air, so when not in use, you want to keep the lid on, and you really want to be careful about not cross-contaminating uh, your efforts, uh, what you're doing. I don't know if you need to shake it or not. The directions are super straightforward. Clean it. Put a small amount cotton swab and then wipe it on there and then wipe it clean and then burnish it with a little uh, four uh, wool, steel wool, not double on. I think it's actually the, the steel wool with four zeros in front of it. I think it is the finest that they make. Uh, once you open this, I suppose there's not really much going back. Uh, and I think, like I said, it does react to air, so you're going to want to try to keep this capped. Uh, be very, pretty rigorous about keeping your Oxflow blue capped when not in use. A lot of this stuff I find, like even like if you're thinking about varnishes or other type of things like that that you may have around the house, solvents uh, or teak oil, anything like that. Once you uncap them, the you've really uh, started the clock on the the effective lifespan of them. So you do not want to rub this on the metal and then stick the same piece of cotton back into your Oxflow blue because that will kind of contaminate the. Uh, the the jar of stuff so I cleaned it I'm just gonna rub some back on there and work it in and see what happens it says about a minute you should let this stuff sit in there and it also says that um, you might have to do this more than more than one time to get your desired sheen so putting this oxfo blue I'm trying to do one section at a time, and I don't know if I have enough on there, so we'll see what happens. So that was the first application. It says let it set up for about a minute, so one, I'll kind of count in my head and we'll see what happens. All right, see what's happening here. It looks like the stuff that I applied to the top may have actually dripped around to the bottom and may actually be working on that part. See that? You don't see that. Uh... For some reason, that part seemed to work pretty good. But maybe I'm not getting it soaked enough or letting it sit enough. See where the drips are accumulating? Where the drips are accumulating, it appears to be bluing, right? Because it's gobbed up on there. There, see how dark those pieces are getting? There. You need to, I guess, really let it sit on that metal and suck into it. So here... And again, this gun is, hmm, I don't know, 12 years old maybe. A uh, lot of, lot of, lot of rounds have gone down range through this gun. So this is um, probably about as worn of a piece as you can get. 
I can show you the top of the slide again for reference. But it looks like that's actually taken there. Okay. Now, I think the trick is going to be to get this uh, uniform finish. Now, again, this is for a piece of a working part of the gun that is covered 99% uh, of the time, or even when it's not covered. It's not covered because the gun is firing. Uh, or the slide is locked, so nobody ever really is going to see the job that I did, but you know, you like to do a good job. You don't want to have some slobbed ass uh, piece of work, but it really does look like it's darkening up now. Now the point now I would say it's almost getting so dark, right, that I might have to do the whole thing. The other, there, I've seen some other uh, online instructional videos, and they seem to indicate that you might have to do this like I don't know, a few times to get the desired sheen that you want. But if you look at that, we're starting to get her done right there. Now, I do have this big section here in the front that's becoming a little bit of a problem. Uh, I think to it, just so you know, I think it says on this bottle of Oxpo Blue uh, eye irritant. So it's uh, probably not good for me to be leaning over this breathing it, but I've got some decent ventilation in the house, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, there we go. Look, that last little blob that I put right there seems like it took on that, that real shiny part. So, let's see if we can get this to take some. All right, because you want a uniform finish. You don't want it slobbed on. But let's see what happens when I wipe it down, give it that, uh, that cold that water cloth. Now, you've got to be real careful here because I'm, I'm messing with the barrel of the gun. And those acids, it says, if you leave those on here, I'm actually starting to get kind of pleased with how this is turning out. Now, if you leave those acids on this gun, it will continue to affect it and might rust. So I'm going to have to be real careful about when I clean up to make sure that none of this stuff dripped in the inside of that barrel and just sits there. Because next thing you know, you'll have a rusty barrel or whatever you apply this to, you're going to have a rusty piece. So I would encourage you to do it in kind of small batches, right? You, you don't want to go so crazy that you can't keep up with what you're cleaning, but it certainly, oh shoot, certainly looks like this stuff's working. Don't spill your bottle of Oxflow Blue. That would probably be a big mess. I don't probably just throw this towel away and turn off the video recorder. Okay, so it's kind of slow going, uh, but as you can tell from where we started, this thing's really darkening up. So I like it. I think we got it coated uh, that real, that exposed steel that was, there's one spot left here that's kind of giving me trouble. And I guess that's just part of this, is you kind of got to play with it and just work it in there. Just keep kind of working it in until it wants to take. Alright, we're going to set it down. We're done with this for now. We did a section, so we're going to go ahead and cap our material. This stuff isn't terribly expensive either. It's uh, like six or seven bucks, maybe eleven bucks I paid for that. Then, as per the instructions, what you want to do is, uh, again, being mindful of that issue of cross-contamination, I am not going to dip this in the water and then re-wipe it. I am going to dip it in the water and wipe it once, and then I am going to uh, discard that piece of rag and do it again. Now, just to make sure that I didn't get this in the barrel, I was pretty careful. I don't, don't think I did. Uh, now it says to make sure that you do not have extra oxpo blue in your in your deal to so this doesn't it doesn't indicate on the um, uh, instructions I don't think on the actual oxpo blue instruction bottle to do this uh, white water or pardon me clean water wipe uh, at the end, but I have seen a couple other instructional videos and they indicated that this was advisable, so I'm going to do it. Here, it looks like it's working. Um, I would say that it is not 100% uniform, and that could partly be with my application, which would not surprise me one bit. Um, however, if I did maybe four or five uh, layers or uh, coats of this stuff, then I think that it would, uh, I could probably get it to even out. I might do another, another uh, coat or two, and then what I'll do is stop the recording, repeat the procedure that you just saw a few times, 
to make sure that uh, I'm trying to get it coated in a uniform fashion. And then uh, maybe I'll show you the end result and see how close I get to uniform. Because right now it looks really good. However, uh, as you can maybe see, there is some darker spots and some lighter spots. And I don't really know what that would be resulting from. Maybe I didn't apply it uniformly. That certainly is a possibility. Or maybe uh, the, the spots that took it better or not quite as well didn't quite get as clean with that acetone. So that could be another variable. Um, and part of it could just be uh, a factor of how this thing is worn over time that wherever it is worn that probably means that there's some friction where the places where it wasn't worn seems to indicate that there wasn't friction as friction occurs it could be roughing up the the steel so that it is in a it can better or uh, it can better absorb the oxfo or has different amount of surface area to react with the oxfo blue um, or less and that could result in some color variation so for the barrel of a gun I'm certainly not going to complain about this um, however if this were for uh, finish work or a barrel of a rifle right now I think I'd probably be um, a little bit more concerned about the difference in color I don't know if you can see that between say there and there but I think that's it I wiped it all off I wiped it off a couple of times with uh, some cold water to make sure that I had gotten it all, made sure that I didn't slob any down the barrel, and then I think probably the last thing I'll do is um, I got a little bit of um, number nine here, and uh, just to make sure that this gun is oiled again, I'll just put a little bit on there to make sure that we have a little bit of lubrication put back onto that barrel because this is uh, generally uh, ready for action. This is a, one of the preferred uh, home defense system guns for me. Uh, great gun. Uh, again, I, I think for a long time it was a service or a gun for either Secret Service or Coast Guard and they put it through some pretty brutal and grueling tests regarding uh, saltwater immersion and pretty much in my experience this, this particular sidearm every time you pull the trigger uh, it goes bang. So, okay, there's a couple spots that didn't really take the Oxfo blue very well. There's a couple spots it took a little bit more than I would have expected. But this is a uh, first treatment, and they do recommend that you do a few treatments. So I'll probably go back over it, do it again, and then come back with a, a follow-up and let you know how it all worked out in the end. But I did want to give you at least an idea of what I did not apply it here nor here, right? This, if you remember, this is about what the end of that barrel looked like. It was kind of like that. Some friction marks over time. Uh, and now the barrel is uh, blued again, certainly. Not 100% uniform, but this is after one coating, simply following the directions on the Oxpo blue bottle. Um, luckily, I'm in a position where I can practice on a piece of a firearm that needs some attention that isn't... Um, really visible all the time anyway so if this isn't perfect it's not going to break my heart but i will put a couple more coats on and see how we do and then follow up and um and continue this video after we get to that point and share with you how it worked out so stay tuned coming right back all right so uh i went ahead and kept playing with it uh, i did about another mm, three coats and uh, thought I'd just touch base. Uh, it's all cleaned up, and then I did a, I don't know why I applied oil the first time, I just had to clean it off to keep messing with this, but um, yeah, mixed results, I gotta say. It, it looks a little bit amateurish, I can't lie. It certainly is, um, it did change the color of a lot of the barrel. There are a couple spots, like here in particular, I just couldn't get the material, the, uh, sub, the solution to affect the, affect the metal. Uh, for whatever reason, don't know. You see a couple spots are darker, a couple spots are lighter. This is the barrel of the sidearm, so you never really see it. So uh, if as a protectant, if, if this is, is a rust inhibitor when done correctly, it may be an improvement. But from an aesthetic point of view, if this were the barrel of a rifle, I'd, I would be uh, uh, not real happy, I don't think. It was very difficult to get a uniform color 
throughout. I don't know if this shows up real well on the uh, video, but um, it, I had a hard time getting it to take evenly all the way throughout. A couple other things you'll notice when you take this Oxpo Blue and you apply it, it kind of has a tendency to kind of want to pool up, so it's difficult to work the solution and get it exactly where you want. Maybe I should have been using more of it, but it kind of has a tendency to pool. And obviously a lot of gun parts are machined, but they are rounded and they have ridges. So the solution also wanted to kind of fall um, away from the area that I was trying to concentrate on. But even after, uh, I guess that was four coats total, I was unable to really get a uniform finish throughout the uh, barrel. I, it's obviously uh, an improved version of where it was before we started. Uh, if the objective was to blue the barrel, I, I, we can say that uh, we, did, we did manage to do that. However, uh, as far as like a professional result goes, I don't know that I would consider this to be a particularly professional result. I would have real reservations putting this uh, Um, onto the barrel of a long gun, for example. Maybe a little tiny spot. Uh, here's one. There's a little tiny nick right here. See the little tiny bit of silver? That might be a good candidate for a little Oxfo blue because all you're trying to do is knock the shine off and a casual glance, then you would not notice um, that spot so much. So maybe that would be a good place to put it. A couple place, uh, places here on the slide rails are candidates to, to maybe just have a dab of it. Now obviously the barrel does not look as silvery as it did before we started. However, as far as like a vast improvement goes, um, I don't think that I would say it's a, a professional grade improvement. Um, and that would concern me if I wanted to use this on anything more than um, say the spot would have to be probably less than a dime. Um, if there was one nick that you had that you wanted to take care of that was less than dime size, I'd probably feel comfortable doing it. I'd feel super comfortable with like a little tiny spot like that, or maybe if you had a little bit of holster wear over time. But if it were the, say I had significant scratching or something on the slide um, of the gun, I would be very nervous about using Oxfo Blue as the home gunsmith enthusiast hobbyist and feeling comfortable and confident that I was going to get a finish that I was happy with. Again, the Oxfo Blue uh, comes in a little bottle. Pretty straightforward instructions, easy to use. I followed the instructions exactly as they were laid out and even watched a couple instructional uh, videos. Um, however, I was unable to get a professional grade finish. Part of that could be that I'm doing cold bluing. Uh, I don't know if that's just part of the game or maybe I needed to put six more coats on. I'll experiment with it a little bit more and check check back with you. Uh, for spot touch-up treatments, I think you'd probably be okay, but if you're talking about cold bluing a large area like the barrel of a rifle, I'd be real nervous about using it. Um, that's it. That's my review so far. Uh, it looks like it, it, it does blue the metal, that's for sure. However, as far as a professional finish, I'm not convinced I could get one. Maybe you would have different results. However, for the tiny um, spot treatment, I think you'd be okay uh, using it for that. But much bigger than a little tiny spot treatment, I'd be nervous. Uh, that's it. Like the, if this helped you out a little bit, then like the video, uh, subscribe. We'll keep these coming, and um, hopefully uh, you got something out of it. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.